Outdoor lighting can be intimidating, but the principles behind it are simpler than you might think. Today, I want to show you how to use the same simple approach for all your outdoor shoots. The real challenge comes when the shots get wider, making the setup more expensive and logistically complex. The core principle used on every outdoor shoot consists of three steps. First, soften the sunlight hitting your subject. Second, raise the lighting level on your subject. And third, create contrast. Now, ideally, the sun should be behind your subject, but not visible in the frame. If the sun is in the frame, balancing the light becomes very difficult. With the sun off frame, it can act as a very nice backlight. So here in this setup, the sun is actually kind of like right here. You can see it based on the shadow. You can see how harsh the sunlight is on the globe. It's creating all those um, reflection off of the table. Now, obviously the shot is not exposed yet, um, but we can see just how harsh that light is. And so we have to find a way to deal with that. This is a little challenging because of the background. The background has some very bright spot and some very dark spot. And so balancing all that can be uh, very tricky. Before we jump into step one and softening that light, I wanted to show you another tool that I sometimes use. I haven't used it uh, very uh, often um, recently, but um, it, it's worth showing because it, it, it helps quite a bit. So I actually own an ND net um, that we can place behind the subject. And so you're gonna see me set that up. And so what, I believe this is a half stop ND net. So what it does is it will drop the brightness of the highlights on our background by half a stop and it leaves our subject uh, intact. So it doesn't actually, you know, I can put ND filter on my camera, but then the whole picture um, is, effect, uh, is affected by it. But here the net is only um, impacting the background and so, it's not much, it's only half a stop, um, but it really helps when you're in those situation where it gets, um, you know, you're at the edge of clipping. So if you look at the waveform monitor, you can kind of take note of where those levels are. And this is with the net in the background, and here it is without the net. And so you can see how all those levels are changing. Again, with the net, without the net. So before we work on lighting, uh, we now need to expose for our background. We can't control the sunlight back there. And so what we want to do is we want to expose for that background. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play with my variable ND filter and I'm going to look on my external monitor um, that has false color to then continue to adjust my ND filter until I feel like my background is in the right place. I'm going to just adjust my ND filter down, looking at my false color, and really I'm looking at um, this area on the deck to make sure that it, it doesn't go um, above peaking. And then once we have our exposure, then we can start with our first step, which is diffusing that sunlight. So we still have very harsh sunlight on the table and on the globe, and I'm simply gonna place a diffuser right above it. And you can see the moment I do that, now the table is fine. We still have a little, um, a little bit of a, a brighter spot up here, but it's not harsh, it's nice and smooth. All that um, reflection that was on the globe earlier, it's all gone. And so that's simply uh, placing a very simple diffuser. Here's the shot with the diffuser and here's the shot without the diffuser. So with a simple diffuser, we can see that now our table is okay. Our deck is not peaking. Like when we look at the waveform, we're on the very limit. We have a little bit right here that's, it's still not peaking, but it, we're getting close. And I, I'm guessing that's those opening right here in, this, in the sky. And so we're actually in pretty good shape already. And if you really don't have anything else, if you have access to almost nothing, if you can at least diffuse the sunlight uh, onto your subject, then, then you're already in good shape. So here's our setup. We have our net and what I like about this picture is you can actually see the difference in what the net is doing if you look at the grass, like how bright this grass is here and on the other side of the net. It just kind of cuts that intensity of the light. And you can see it here too, right? Like how um, darker the grass here is compared to here. Um, but so that's our net and then a simple, really small 
diffuser, as long as it covers the area where our subject is, then that's more than enough. It, it's good. So the next step is now to raise the level on our subject. So we've diffused the light above it, but now we want to raise the level on the globe to reach the levels that we want on our uh, monitors, on our false colors or on the waveform monitors. And so we're going to do that using uh, a bounce. And we can use a white bounce, we can use a gold bounce, a silver bounce, a combination of both. And, um, and that's going to depend on the intensity of the light that we need. In this case, um, I used a silver bounce. And it's very harsh, but just see, just look at how much level the silver bounce is actually producing. Now, obviously, this is not okay, and we're going to have to deal with it. But the fact that we can raise the levels on our subject that much with a silver reflector is great. The, what you can do here now to control the intensity, uh, if you're kind of like in between, right? Like the white bounce uh, is not enough level and then a silver bounce is way too much. Then all you need to do is back the silver bounce further away from your subject and it will kind of slowly diminish. And so you just need to find the right place. Now, um, again, look at my settings. Um, they have not changed since we did the exposure on the background, right? We're not touching our camera settings again. All we're doing now is placing um, uh, reflectors around our subject to achieve what we're trying to achieve. Um, but so in, in this case, um, I, I put the silver reflector kind of where I wanted it. Now, I don't like this spot. And so what we're going to do now is actually put a diffuser between the globe and the silver reflector. So we're going to have the silver reflector bounce light through the diffuser onto the globe. And here you go. So here is the shot without the diffuser and the shot with the diffuser. The next step is to then create contrast between those two sides. And we can do that by placing a bounce on the other side. Uh, with the white bounce, uh, we can see um, that we added some here, but then it kind of just flattened that globe. Now it looks pretty nice. Uh, and then if I bring that bounce closer to the globe, then I can increase the level of um, brightness that we bring on that side. But for me, I like more contrasty shot, like this is way too flat. And so um, this is where I want to be. Uh, I have um, quite a bit of, of a difference between um, the top of the globe here and then the bottom of the globe here. So I have good enough contrast for what I like. And then we can see what the sunlight is doing, which is, again, creating a little bit of a of a backlight around it. We can see it a little bit around here on this side. And so this is our setup. We, we have our net, we have our diffuser that's uh, diffusing the sunlight on our subject. We have our silver reflector that's shining through this diffuser. And then here it's actually white, so it's gold on this side, white on the other. And it's adding a little bit of uh, light on this globe, creating that contrast. This is literally the same setup we're going to reuse over and over again on every outdoor shoot. It's just the size of the equipment changes based on the type of shots that we want. So the wider the shot, the bigger those bounce, those reflectors and those uh, diffusers need to be in order to cover as much of the area as possible. So let me show you a couple different examples. Um, we needed to film this softball player hitting the ball. And you can just see one how bright and, and harsh that sunlight is. And so again, it's placed right behind them. And we needed to capture uh, the batter and then the dugout that has a few players in them as well. And so same thing, we framed the batter and kept the sun out of the frame and use, and you can already see it, use the sunlight um, to create some interesting backlight on the, her helmet and we'll see it like in other helmets and people's hair back there. And so with this wide of a shot, there was no way for us uh, logistically or, or in the budget to be able to diffuse the entire area. Um, and so in this particular case, we use two four by four mirrors, like silver mirrors um, to, to bounce 
light directly, one directly onto the batter and the second one directly into the dugout. And um, again, we use the same technique where we, we slowly back them into the place where we ended up having the right levels of light onto our batter and into the dugout. And that's the end shot. And again, you can see how much light we're getting from those mirrors here and all the way into the dugout to um, raise the levels to what we needed. And again, like you can see how much um, backlight we're getting from the sun and it's just gorgeous. Like you can't, it would, it would be difficult. Uh, it would be a big setup to try to get all those uh, different um, areas to, to light up just like that. So to use the sun at your advantage is, is very helpful. And in this case, because we couldn't diffuse the sunlight, um, it was helpful that we could shoot kind of towards the end of day. Now we're not in golden hour. We're pretty close because when you see the end shot, you can see the colors in the sky are, are getting gold. So we're, we're close to golden hour. And so, but the sun is pretty low. And so that's helpful. Like if you can't diffuse the light, uh, try to shoot when the light is not as harsh as midday. Uh, and we're here in Arizona, so the sun is very, very harsh. And um, the longer we can wait for the sun to go as low as possible, the better it is anyway. This next example, it, it's gonna start looking very familiar to you. Like it's the very same setup every single time. But we're filming a, a commercial for this um, beauty cream product. And so we have a bottle of the product here on this little table and we're using the exact same thing. So we have a diffuser overhead to diffuse this light and then we're using two silver reflector, one on each side, to bring the level of that uh, product up to what we want. Now, obviously, when you see two silvers like this, there's no contrast. It's it's just flooded from from both sides, and that's what the the director wanted. Um, and and then you also know when you're working with the right uh, grip crew, um, they're setting up shade for for the camera operators, and so that's always nice. Um, so this is a normal setup, but then um, the challenge was the background because they wanted people enjoying a pool behind the product. And so we have this huge area back there with people um, that needs to be lit. And so um, this guy is positioning a silver reflector to hit some of those um, people back there to make sure that they're um, lit properly. And then you have to use just like the, the size is just getting bigger and bigger as the area uh, and the shot gets wider because we need to hit all those people to raise their level. And again, this is another example where you could not diffuse this shot. Uh, I mean, you could. <laughs> everything is possible in Hollywood, I guess. I don't work in Hollywood, but I heard everything is possible in Hollywood. But the, the only way you would be able to diffuse this area is literally with a crane that would go over the house to hang a giant, um, you know, a giant uh, frame to diffuse this sunlight. Um, and that's just, that was not an option. Um, so if it's an option for you, great, um, you know, but, but for us, that's not in the budget. That's a very different um, setup time and, and logistics to make that happen. And so in our case, the only thing we could do, again, is just bounce as much level as we could onto um, our subjects just to make sure that the levels are as high as we can to try to balance it with the sunlight. Okay, the last example, I promise this is it. Um, so we needed to shoot this uh, commercial inside of a uh, baseball stadium. And I know the roof is closed, so it's technically not outdoors. Uh, but those spotlights and, and, and even those uh, windows here. Uh, but you can see how harsh um, all the lights are. And this is actually almost more challenging than outside because you now have spotlights like this all around. And so it's not like you're dealing with one sunlight um, that's coming from one direction. They're actually coming from all around it. Uh, but it's the same, um, again, it's the same setup. It's the exact same um, conditions. And so, again, you should be able to now identify all the different components. Uh, but we have a large diffuser that's, um, 
diffusing all those spotlights coming in onto our subjects. Um, and then we're actually using two 1200, um, Aperture 1200 lights with Fresno lens on them um, to then provide levels and to our subject, but they go through another diffuser. So uh, because you know those, those lights are really harsh, uh, we actually have a, um, a diffuser here, and then there's another diffuser on the other side for this for this lamp. So each each lamp have, has their own diffuser to then um, bring levels onto our subject. And then on this side, we have diffusers as well to deal with those spotlights. Um, but we then realized we needed more um, contrast. We just didn't have enough contrast this way. And so what ended up happening is we decided to use a neg instead of one of the diffusers. So we still have a diffuser back here um, that's letting some of the light come into the side and hitting a little bit of the side of our subject. Um, but then the neg is blocking all the light coming into this side of their face. And so now we have more contrast with the, the key side being hit with those lamps and then the neg on this side. And then we added a backlight uh, because we didn't have, um, those lights didn't hit exactly where we wanted. So we just added a, a backlight to, to provide that nice um, light around their head. So, but as you can see, the technique remains um, the same. They're consistent. You just need to scale the equipment to fit the shot. So you need to start small, you need to practice, and then you can start scaling up as needed. But ultimately, it's about achieving that perfect mix of softness, brightness, and contrast. So I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to share your setup and experiences filming outdoors. But thank you so much for watching this video until the end. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like to offer you my free camera setting cheat sheet. So look for the link below to download your free cheat sheet. Thanks again and happy filming.